Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Simply Soccer Podcast. For those of you who are new and are just joining us, uh, we typically do these podcasts every single Wednesday. Uh, so thank you for tuning in if you're new. Um, no real updates today before we get started. Um, there are a few things that are going to be happening in the future with the website and things of that nature, but I'll let you guys know when that all comes to fruition and when changes occur. Okay, so in today's podcast, um, I have a, a topic I've, um, for some reason, not really gone over yet in a podcast, although this is only podcast, I believe, number 15, so, you know, we've only had 15 of them, so that could be the reason. Uh, but uh, the reason I'm surprised that I haven't gone over this is because it's an issue or an area that I, I feel very strongly about. Um, yeah, I guess I've just never gotten around to or I've just forgotten um, about discussing it. And this is a topic I've gone over in videos before, uh, most notably a video I did actually over a year ago. And it's honestly probably one of my favorite videos on the channel, um, not due to the quality of the video or anything like that, because the quality of the video isn't even that great. It's kind of grainy. Um, it's when I first started out, so my presence on camera isn't that great. I mean... Uh, and all that, but the reason I like it um, is kind of twofold. One, um, because the idea that we go over in that video is extremely important and can really help players. And two, because it has helped players quite significantly. I've had players who have told me they've done this thing that I go over in this video and have seen massive improvements. So I will link that video down in the description if you want to go take a look at it. But essentially, what it is. Um, is it's a mentality um, or visualization technique that allows you to play base, you know, as well as possible in a match. Now, I'm going to be going over this topic today, and uh, this is a topic I really don't recommend you skip, and I recommend you listen to all of this because this is a topic a lot of players tend to avoid or tend to not put as much emphasis on because it's not physical, right? It's not a physical aspect of the game. It's not a skill move. It's not a shooting technique. It's not something you can do with the ball. And I used to be like this too. If there was a, a like a training or a drill or something that didn't involve the ball or wasn't physical at all, um, I hated it. <laughs> I didn't like it. Um, but as I got older, I realized the importance of mentality and confidence and the non-physical side of the game. And not only for soccer, but for life in general. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. And this really is important. I mean, you could be the most skillful player. You could be the best player on your team. But if you don't have this side taken care of or in check, um, you're going to struggle to stand out in matches. You're going to struggle to be the player that can actually express their talent. I mean, I'm sure we all know a player who's extremely talented. They'll do really cool things in practice. Um, you know, they can do every single move. They have great shooting. They have great dribbling and all that. But for some reason, they're not doing it in matches. Or for some reason, they're not living up to their potential. Um, the most likely cause of that is because they don't have the mental side down. They don't have the confidence or something of that nature. So that's essentially what we're going to be discussing in this podcast. Okay, so let's get right on into it. So the mental side of football or soccer or whatever you want to call it um, is, in my eyes, more important than the physical. Now, that's not to say, uh, you know, don't don't then come at me and be like, oh, well, how can you get good if you don't train the physical side? You, you have to have both. You have to have balance. Like most things in life, you need a balance. Um, but the reason I tell you the mental side of soccer is more important than the physical is simply because not enough players focus enough on the mental side, where if they did, they would be much, much better. I mean, just having confidence in your game can make you perform better, regardless of your skill level. You can push above your weight with high confidence in the game, and if you're someone who's already skilled and talented, you're going to be thriving on the pitch. You're going to be standing out. So this is such such an important area for those of you who struggle when you get in matches, for those of you who struggle to be consistent with your performances, and that's the main thing I see is, is players struggling from consistency, which is usually a confidence issue uh, most of the time. I mean, just imagine going into every single one of your matches brimming, you know, like full to the brim with confidence, just completely confident in your ability, 
in your ability to make a difference, in your ability to beat people, in your ability to score, or if you're a defender, in your ability to prevent goals, whatever it may be, imagine that you can go into every single match with that level of confidence, with the level of confidence that the professionals, or the best professionals go into. I mean, when you think of Messi or Ronaldo or Neymar or Suarez or the players who are the best in the world, do you think they go into matches unconfident, ignore my phone there, unconfident or extremely confident in their ability? They go in extremely confident. And the reason is because either knowingly or unknowingly, they worked on the mental side of their game. I mean, some players just happen to come across it. I mean, professionals are going to be getting professional level training on the mental side. I mean, uh, they'll probably be taken through visualization techniques. They'll be, you know, coached on different mental aspects, you know, stuff like that. Um, but some players take to it better than others. And the top players, you know, without doubt are the ones who have worked on their confidence and have had assurance in their ability. I mean, you think of Eden Hazard last season, he looked the most unconfident player on the pitch at times, and it's such a stark contrast when you compare Eden Hazard from last year to Eden Hazard a year before that, or even probably what he'll be this year. And the issue was a mental issue. It was a mental issue which caused him to have a terrible season. One of the best players in the world, too. So, when you think of like these Ronaldos and these Messis, they have unwavering faith in their ability, confidence in their ability, and it comes because they've worked on the mental side of their game. They've developed the belief systems. They've developed the confidence. Um, and just to give you an example, um, I'm a Liverpool supporter, for those of you who don't know, but most of you already do know. Um, we have a player called Philip Coutinho on our team, um, and probably a lot of you are familiar with him. And he is one of the most technically gifted players I think we've ever had at Anfield. So why isn't he the best player in the Premier League right now? Because he has the ability to be so. And I guarantee it's because he's still working on confidence issues. And that's kind of something that's plagued his whole career. Now we'll see if Klopp is able to remedy that. But I guarantee you, as soon as he figures out a way to be confident every single time he steps on that pitch and have, you know, a good mental game, a stronger mental game, you're going to see a lot more consistency from Philip Coutinho. But you compare him to some of the best players. Like, I think, personally, Philip Coutinho is more technically gifted than Luis Suarez. As far as, like, quick feet, how skillful he is, and all that, I think he's more technically gifted and technically better than Luis Suarez. But here's the issue. Luis Suarez performs better. Luis Suarez does better. Luis Suarez innovates more. He's more unpredictable. He does all these things because his mentality is so damn strong no matter how much hate he gets no matter how many people attack him no matter what happens same with Messi same with Ronaldo the best players in the world they don't listen to criticism they don't let things affect their confidence because they've worked on the mental side of their game they're mentally strong they have mental toughness um, and I'm just using Philip Coutinho as an example because I'm trying to show you of a talented player who's literally got more talent than I've I can't, like, he's got so, he could be the best player in the world if things went right for him. He's only 23. Um, but if the unwavering confidence in his ability is never developed, he won't become that player. So, as you can see, this is a very important thing. I mean, the difference between Lionel Messi and Philip Coutinho is vast. Like, there's a huge difference. But the difference is not in their skill ability. Uh, same with Luis Suarez and Phil Coutinho. The difference is not in their technical ability because they're about at the same. Phil Coutinho might even be a little bit better. The issue is with their mentality um, and their confidence and their belief in themselves. So we're already nine minutes in, but I want to give you a technique that can help you start or uh, start helping you play better in matches right away. And this is the, the mentality technique or visualization technique, I should say, that I went over in that video you can look at that's in the description. Now, I still recommend you go look at that video, but I'm going to describe the technique right here. Um, and it's a visualization technique I've used. I've seen it personally work for me um, um, and have amazing results. And there are, on, there are many studies you can also look at, and I'll give you an example of a, a study that was conducted to prove this or to see if this worked. Um, but there have been many studies also that have been conducted to essentially show how important the mental side of things and visualization can be. So here is the technique I want you to do. 
uh, 30 minutes to like an hour or two before your next match or practice or whenever you're going to play, whenever, okay? Um, I did this before a match because, you know, it was important, but I accidentally came across this. So what you do is you need to just close your eyes, put on some music, put on something that's going to allow you to basically withdraw into yourself and not be distracted by anything around you, okay? So whether you need to put on music, um, I put on music when I did this. I was on a team bus on my way to a match, in fact, when I did this. So I had music on. So whatever you need to do. I want you to visualize as vividly as possible. I mean, And what I mean by that is imagine the grass. Imagine the smells, the sights. Use as many senses as you can. And have a very vivid image of yourself playing in the match you're about to play in. Against the team you're about to play. Visualize in as much detail as you can. So visualize the pitch. Visualize yourself standing on the pitch, the feeling of the grass, the feeling of the ball when you make contact with it, you know, the sights and the sounds, the smells, everything. Try and visualize it as clearly as you can. And you can you can repeat this over and over again until you get it. It's fine. Just keep visualizing it as clearly as you can. Now what I want you to do, uh, and this is what I did. Now this will vary. This next part will vary. Um, based on what your position is. So for defenders, this might be different, but I'm an attacking player, so I'm going to tell you what I did. I visualized myself, then, in my visualization, uh, take getting the ball, receiving it, and then beating a man one-on-one -on -one perfectly and going past him. I visualized myself scoring, controlling the ball perfectly and scoring. I visualized myself doing everything right, everything perfectly. I vi visualized it in as much detail. I felt the impact of the ball against me when I controlled it. I felt the impact of the ball on my foot when I kicked it. The sound the ball makes. The rustling of the net. The cheers when I scored. My teammates congratulating me. I saw when I beat someone one-on-one. -on -one, um, I saw the movements. I saw them being faked out by the move I did. You know, I saw my teammates make runs after I'd beaten him to get into position. Um, I imagined as much detail as I could possible. Now, what happened after I did this, and I did this about like an hour before my match. The bus ride was like an hour and a half. So about an hour before my match. And this was before a final. This was a, a co this was in college. This was a final, um, the conference final. So it was the biggest game of our season. And we were playing the team that was literally ranked number one in the nation. In the whole of the United States of America, we were playing the number one ranked team um, in college. And I was leaving nothing. The reason I had come across this is because I was leaving nothing up to chance. I'm like, I'm going to visualize this. I had no idea if it would work or not. I had no idea. You know, I just kind of stumbled across it, but this is what I did. And I want to emphasize something about what happened in the game after I did this visualization technique. Now, now long story short, we did lose the game. Uh, we did not win. Uh, we, but... I had probably the best game of my season in that match. I scored a goal, um, a free kick. Um, and one thing I want to emphasize, and, and like the whole match, I was just on fire. I was beating two, three players at a time. I, I crossed the ball into one of my teammates who actually missed a wide open net. I scored the free kick. But here's the thing I want to, want to uh, emphasize and highlight that really blew me away when I and not during the game but after the game when I went over this I'm like whoa that's insane and what happened was in my visualization I visualized myself beating someone one-on-one -on -one with a step over then sprinting past them to the byline and then crossing in for one of my teammates to score um, and the step over because it's my one of my favorite moves in the game when I reflected on the game afterwards in the game I Cr cross the ball in, and I'm, I'm probably like maybe 35 yards out from goal here. Uh, I'm kind of central, a little bit to the left. Cross it in, it's cleared, it's headed straight back to me, and I control it. So then now I think, and I see that there's one guy like right on the box, right on their 18-yard box. I'm like, I'm going to take a run at this guy. I run directly at the guy, do a step over, beat him, go to the byline, and whip in a cross that goes right to my teammate who should have scored. They missed a wide-open net. But it was almost play by play exactly the same and i'm not exaggerating when i say this it was play by play almost exactly the same as the visualization i had had an hour earlier on the bus ride there 
almost exactly the same. And when I say almost exactly the same, I mean my position that I was where where I was and where I did the move was almost exactly the same in my in my visualization. The beating of the defender was almost exactly the same. Same move, same result, defender did the same thing. My cross in to my teammate, exactly the same. Pretty much play by play. The only difference in my visualization and what happened in the match is my teammate didn't score, which I didn't really have much control over. They mishit it. It came off their ankle instead of their foot or on the side of their foot and it missed. But it blew me away when I analyzed that later and it really showed me the power of visualization and made me do more research on this. Um, and apparently you know, this has been a well-known thing, not too well-known if you, you might not have known about this, but it's been a thing that's been, many research studies have been conducted around this idea of visualization. And basically, I'm not going to give you the whole science behind it because that would take too long, but here's the kind of watered-down, simplified version. When you visualize vividly, your mind can't tell the difference between what reality is and what your visualization is. So essentially, by d visualizing enough, you can trick your mind into thinking that your visualization is reality and what has actually happened or actually is going to happen. So that's why when I came into the match and I had an opportunity to do a step over on someone in almost the exact same position I visualized, my brain was thinking, oh, this is real life. You know, this visualization or whatever is what happened. It's already happened. You know what to do. And I just did it. Um, scoring a goal and you know it just I had an overall amazing match because I had visualized myself playing so well it also helped my confidence but let me go over the study of, of why this works and my favorite study for this is what they did is they had three groups of people um, and they had one group and all basically like the same athletic ability you know when they do study groups like this they try and diversify and make sure every group is, is similar um, so they had one group and they told the one group that we're gonna have you practice free throws. Okay? So basketball free throws. We're going to have you practice however many hours a day, right? They got a second group and we said, you're going to do nothing. You're not going to even going to come in. Just don't touch a basketball for the next, I don't know how long the study went on. I think it was like five or six weeks. Don't touch a basketball for the next six weeks. Don't take a single shot. Don't even think about it. Just we'll call you back in six weeks. Okay? So that was the second group. And the third group, again, they said, we're not going to have you shoot a single basket However, we are going to ask that you visualize in as much detail you shooting free throws. And in your visualization, what we want you to do is visualize yourself making every single free throw that you take. So while the people in the first group who were practicing free throws were practicing their free throws for like an hour or two or however long they made them do it, the third group was visualizing the same thing. They weren't actually doing it, but they were visualizing themselves making free throws over and over and over again. And they were told to be as vivid and as detailed in their visualization as possible. So they would just close their eyes and they would think about it. And I want to um, have you notice a very important point of what these the researchers told the people to do. They said, imagine yourself making every single free throw. So essentially, perfect being perfect, right? No flaws, no mistakes. Don't imagine yourself missing. Imagine yourself making every single one. So standing there, swoosh, take another one, swish, swish, swish over and over again. So after I think it was five or six weeks, I don't have the, 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 the details in front of me, but I think that was the length of time, like five to six weeks of the people who were practicing actual free throws, the people who did nothing and the people visualizing, who do you think when they came back after six weeks, they had all of them actually take free throws. Who do you think made the most of their shots? Obviously, since we've been discussing this, um, you know the answer. It was actually the players or the people who were visualizing themselves making the free throws. And this blew me away when I saw this study. I'm like, you mean the people who were actually practicing their free throws who were actually practicing for five to six weeks too, every day, that's a significant amount of time, did worse than the people who visualized. Now, the, the group that did the worst of the worst were the people who did nothing, um, which goes to show that if you do nothing, you're not going to make any progress. So there's a lesson in that too. But the people who made the most weren't the ones who 
were actually taking the free throws every single day. The ones who made the most were ones who were visualizing in detail, making every single basket. And the reason of the reason this what happened was because they were visualizing every single day so consistently and in as much detail as possible and because in those visualizations they visualized making every single basket their brain or their mind could not determine or separate that from reality their mind thought that was actually happening um, and I'll tell you another study that's very interesting as well about this so when they went to actually shoot free throws, their mind thinks they've been doing this over and over again, and not only doing it over and over again, but making every single basket over and over and over again. So when it came time to actually take shots, in their mind, they've been doing it over and over again perfectly. They told them to, you know, you know visualize, you know, the technique they were using, everything about it. And they did better than the people who were act actually practicing. Now, don't get the wrong idea here. This doesn't mean you shouldn't practice. This doesn't mean you shouldn't actually go out and physically do things. I'm just trying to demonstrate the power of this visualization. Obviously, ideally, you're both practicing physically and you're training your mind as well. But an important thing to take away from the people who were training their mind is they had confidence in their ability to make the shots. Every single time they were visualizing, they were making every single shot. And what do a lot of players tend to do when they think about their game? They think of themselves missing. They think that they're not going to make the shot. They think they're going to screw up. And I know a lot of you listening think this way. A lot of you have told me that you get nervous. You get nervous that you're going to mess up. You get nervous that this coach is going to watch you embarrass yourself. You get nervous you're going to miss the chance or you mess up a cross. And what this study proved, or at least kind of proved, is a lot of that comes from your belief. If you believe you're going to mess up, you will. But if you believe you're going to make every single free throw, you will make more of them. If you believe, for example, and this is what you should believe, let's say you're a striker. Let's say you believe you're going to make every single chance that comes your way, every, even the hard ones. Every single time you have a goal scoring opportunity, you believe you're going to score. Now let's take another player who thinks they're going to miss every single time. Which one do you think is going to score? And they have the same ability. Which one do you think is going to score more? The one that has belief in themselves. The one that goes in front of goal and says, I'm going to score every single time. I guarantee you Ronaldo thinks that. I guarantee you Messi thinks that. Or Ibrahimovic. Or the best players in the world. They think every single time they get a chance, they're going to score. And because they've drilled that into their head, they've visualized themselves scoring. They, they don't have any other belief except, I'm going to score. Or whatever. Play the perfect pass. Whatever action it is. They know they're going to do well, whatever it may be, because they have the unwavering belief that, yes, this is going to happen. And because when you think of things, you also visualize things. A lot of us use images in our heads when we think of things um, because of that. So if you're thinking thoughts like, I'm going to score every single time, you're visualizing that, you're imagining that, that's what you become accustomed to. That's what the whole point of that is. So if you really want to start get in control of your mentality, you need to start believing that you're going to do well every single time. You need to start visualizing your success. And the thing I realized is when I played that match where I played probably my best match all season and scored the goal and did the move exactly as I visualized, I was not like a confident player at that point. Like I was having a good season, but I kind of went up and down on confidence. That was only one visualization session I did before one match. Imagine how much better it gets if you do it every single day. If you visualize for 15, 20 minutes, you playing perfectly every single day. Imagine what will happen when game time comes. I did it just before on a bus before a match for maybe 30 minutes. That's it. And yet I was able to play that well just from that. And of course, there are other things that go into this. There are other factors. Like you can't expect every single time you do this to play amazing. But you need to get control of your mentality. It's such an important area. Now, before we end, because um, we're at 24 minutes, before we end, I want to mention one other study. Um, and this one was done on Olympic athletes. Um, and what they did is the same thing. And Olympic athletes do this. They visualize themselves being successful. And honestly, you need to if you're going to be as fine-tuned. as I mean, think of an Olympic gymnast. The margin for error is so slim. If any of you watched the Olympics and watched that guy break his leg, he was off by maybe a fraction of a second. But even that fraction of a second caused him to break his leg because you have to be so precise and fine-tuned. And a lot of the ways, um, besides, you know, very vigorous training, um, but I know that 
Olympic athletes also go through visualization training, and this is what this study is. So what they did is they got some Olympic athletes, and they told them, and they hooked them up to these machines, um, which was, uh, I think, monitoring their response time, monitoring their muscles, um, things like that. And they told them, I want, we want you, and I think it was for runners. They got runners so who did track and field events. They said, I want you to visualize you doing your event. And they took them through the whole process of their event, and they said, as vividly as you can, I want you to visualize yourself doing your event, winning your event, and all this. And what they noticed, and this blows me away too, what they noticed is the very same muscles you that they used when they physically did these events were activated when they were vividly visualizing them. The exact same muscles. So the exact same muscles that they used when they ran, the exact same everything that they used when they did these events were firing just through thinking about it vividly. And that's the point. You're, because their mind actually thought that they were in the event at that moment, the muscles started firing. Muscle memory was actually being developed when they weren't even on the track. And that's why the people who were taking the free throws were able to make so many more than the people who had actually practiced doing free throws. Because they had actually been developing muscle memory somehow while just visualizing it. But they were also developing the belief that they're going to make every single basket. So this is very important, guys. This, this can literally transform your game not overnight, but pre pretty damn quickly. If you do the visualization technique that I've gone over in this, which is vividly visualize yourself playing perfectly, playing it to the best of your ability, um, you will you'll see massive improvements, and I can promise you this. Again, like anything, don't come to me and be like, oh, I did this and it didn't work. And then I ask you, oh, how many times did you do it? Well, I did it before my last game. So once. God, stop. Don't do that. Don't be the, don't be the complainer. Don't be the victim be the person who actually sticks with it and actually try something for an extended amount of time before giving up on it the amount of people who who comment and say you know i tried it and it didn't work i'm like well how long did you try it for were you consistent did you do the things you need to do to make it work or did you just try it once and it didn't work and you're like oh it just doesn't work for me i'm a victim don't do that um and i, I don't do that to make fun of anyone i don't say that to um, to make anyone feel bad, I say that because it's going to hinder your progress. Because I remember um, getting a few, like either an email or a comment um, on the visualization technique, and it was from someone who said, yeah, it, just, it doesn't really work for me. And it always amazes me when I get comments like this, because it's not that it doesn't work for you. It's that you're not allowing it to work for you. You're not putting in the effort. You can't expect... This is not a magic pill secret technique, by the way. This is just something that works. If you do it consistently. If you do this over and over again. Yeah, it worked for me before my final match. Um, but I had been doing it before that, unconsciously, without knowing it. Because... At times when I had confidence in my ability, I would see myself doing these good things in matches. It wasn't until I concentratedly or concentrated on doing it that I discovered the the benefits and the amazing results that it can have. But guys, seriously try this out. If you're someone who's struggling with confidence, if you're someone who's inconsistent in matches, if you're someone who just wants to be better, who wants to be a better player, who wants to score more goals, wants to have more impact in matches, wants to get to that next level, and I'm assuming all of you do, then you need to be doing this. And it doesn't need to be long. Take 15 to 20 minutes, 10 minutes even, every single day to do this. Even if you don't have a match, even if you don't have a game, just sit down after this podcast, okay? After you're done listening to this, um, sit down for 10 minutes and visualize yourself in a match as vividly as you can, playing amazingly. Vision your, um, visualize yourself doing your favorite move against someone and it working perfectly. Visualize yourself getting an opportunity to score and placing it perfectly into the net where you want to place it. Imagine yourself or visualize yourself in as much detail as you can playing that perfect through ball for your teammate or your defender making that perfect last ditch tackle or that great defensive header whatever position if you're a goalie making that great save rushing out and getting to the ball before the forward or whatever it may be visualize these things and it will be so much easier to do them in matches i'm telling you 
this can be so big. Some of you are gonna not. Some of you are gonna stop listening to this and not do this. I, I, I'm probably most of you, but there. I'm just hoping there's a few of you who are listening to this who will actually do this and see the amazing results that can come about from doing this. Now, once again, I'm not discouraging actual physical training. Again, you need balance. You need both. You need to be doing your physical training often as well. So training with the ball, doing that, like the free throw story was not to, or study was not to, um, discourage you from actually taking the free throws or in this case, practicing, you know, your skills and all that. It's just to show you how powerful visualization can be. So imagine how much better you can get if you're practicing as you practice every single day, but you're also taking that 10 minutes or 15 minutes every single day to visualize yourself playing amazingly. You'll be so blown away by how much this will help you. And it won't even take long. You do this for like a week or two consistently and you'll start seeing results. Don't stop after that. Keep going, but you'll see it. Um, before matches, I would recommend doing it even longer. So, um, and do it close to when the match starts. So before your warm up. So, like, if you have a bus ride over to a match, for example, that's the perfect time to plug in some music and visualize. If you, um, well, don't do it in school. I was about to say in your last class before a match, but um, I'm not going to, that's a bad recommendation on my part. Anyway, so I hope you guys take this to heart. Remember the video, which is much shorter and goes over this technique, basically, if you want a refresher, um, is down below. I'll put another video down there that um, talks about a similar topic. And guys, seriously, you know, take put your take your success into your own hands. Um, take control of how good you're going to become because I'm telling you right now, the mental side of the game is as important or more important than the physical side. And I learned that the hard way. And for those of you who are young who can learn that early, and even if you're not, even if you're my age, which is 24, even if you're my age, you can still learn this and should learn this. Um, but... Take it to heart, guys. The mental side, I know, is a foreign to many players and maybe uncomfortable to deal with. Um, but it's essential that you develop it if you want to become a fantastic or good player at all. If you have aspirations, I mean, there are many players who have been commenting recently saying they want to go pro. Well, if you want to go pro, you got to do what the pros do. you got to start developing the attributes that a pro possesses. And strong mentality is one of those attributes. So you need to be start developing this. All right, so we're we're past time, so we're gonna have to wrap this up. Uh, thanks for listening. This is um, I don't know how organized this was. I kind of just rambled on for a bit, but it's a very important lesson. So make sure you apply this again. Look at the links down below. Um, like and share this podcast. And if you're new and you made it all the way to the end, I mean, dude, that's awesome. Um, please hit that subscribe button. We do this every Friday, and we have videos every single week as well that are designed to help you improve as a player. Um, and now to the hashtag, um, basically. At the end of every podcast, we do a hashtag, um, which lets me know that you made it to the end. Um, so let's do hashtag visualization, if um, that seems appropriate. So hashtag visualization, and if you ask me a question with that hashtag, it's more likely I'll answer it. That doesn't guarantee I'll answer it. I have to like your question, but hashtag leave a question more likely I answer it. Even if you don't have a question and you're just here to listen and learn, that's fantastic. Put hashtag visualization in the comments because it lets me know that you've listened and it lets me know that you're committed to improvement. Um, and I always love to see the subscribers who listen to these because it really kind of separates them from the crowd and makes me realize who is uh, trying to learn and who is trying to get better and all that. So thanks guys for listening. Make sure you do all that. Hashtag visualization. Make sure you actually do this technique. Don't just write down the hashtag and then not do the technique. Uh, try it after we're done in the next few seconds um, and see how it is and keep at it. All right, guys, thanks for listening. I'll see you on the next video uh, or uh, talk to you in the next podcast. <laughs>